Good morning, St. Luke Saints. Today is Sunday, January 31st, the fourth Sunday of Epiphany. So happy Epiphany season to everyone. Today will be a communion service, Holy Communion. So if you would like to participate from home, please uh, prepare some um, crackers, bread, some wine or juice for, um, that, so that we may break bread together even from our own homes. I invite you to do that. Please um, use this time of the prelude to prepare your hearts and your minds for worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Compassionate God, 
you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion. May your words comfort us, inspire us, and guide us into a deeper level of discipleship. We pray for our church and community during this health crisis. We pray for your healing and care that all will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hi, I'm so glad to see you today. So it's January, so I've been thinking about my budget and, and stuff, and I figured out something pretty cool. I figured out that we can go out or get takeout for dinner every single night. I won't have to cook dinner anymore. And I won't have to go to the grocery store as much. I'm going to have so much extra time. It's going to be terrific. What do you think? Well, you know, the only thing, if I don't go to the grocery store as much, I probably won't have time to get, like, food for the food bank here at church because I won't be in the store as much. It will, and if I'm eating out every single night, I probably won't have the money to get some food for the food bank. But, but that's okay, don't you think? No, maybe it's not okay. You know, in the second lesson today, Jesus is answering some questions people are asking him. And they're asking, is it okay if we do this? And he says, well, yeah, it's okay for you to do that. But you have to think about if it's going to make things harder for your neighbor. So if it's going to be a stumbling block for your neighbor. So... If I eat dinner out every single night, it's okay. I'm allowed to do that. It's not against the law. But is it going to be a stumbling block for my neighbor? Well, what about the neighbor that comes to St. Luke to get a, food, a bag of food from the food pantry? Yeah, it might make things harder for that person. If I'm not able to help support the food pantry and support the, the missions that St. Luke is a part of, then I think it would be harder for my neighbor. So maybe I shouldn't eat out every single night. It, it's not very healthy, and it's not going to be a very good choice for my money either. And if I keep cooking at home some, then I can still bring food to share with people who need it here at St. Luke that come every week to get a bag of food. So I think that's a better choice. Just because we can do something doesn't mean that we should. And if you want to join me in making a choice that helps your neighbor, next week is Super Bowl Sunday, and we participate in the Super Bowl of Caring, where we help people who need food. So we collect money and we collect food items that we can use with our food pantry so that we can help our neighbors and feed our neighbors. So I want you to pay attention because more information is going to be coming out about how you can make a donation. Maybe you skip eating out one night or you skip that coffee in the morning and you make a donation to our food pantry here so that we can not do what we're, what's okay, but do what actually helps someone else too. We love you and we miss you and we can't wait until we're all back here together again. Our first reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 13. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, 
they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who, passes, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when, there is, when, when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their, fa their falling, I will never eat meat, so that I may not cause one of them to fall. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, who cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying with a loud voice came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another what is this a new teaching with authority he commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him at once his fame began to spread throughout the regions of galilee this is the gospel of the lord praise to you o christ well today's short gospel reading is again from the first chapter of mark we're still in the first chapter of Mark, and we learn a lot about Jesus and how he will become popular from this short little interaction he has in the synagogue. We get an understanding of why Jesus' fame will spread so quickly. Jesus was different because the text says Jesus taught with authority. Also, Jesus healed with authority. So Jesus talked the talk, and he walked the walk. Jesus' words and actions were consistent. I remember reading some of the works by M, uh, Dr. M. Scott Peck, the author of the book, The Road Less Traveled, and he wrote about his earlier years. He spoke that he always had this deep, authoritative voice, and his surprise, people would follow him. They would listen to him. They would do what he said because his voice was so authoritative they figured he knew what he was talking about. But he confessed that often he did not know what he was talking about and that his actions didn't match his voice. And so eventually people learned that he was a big talker, but he was not a big doer. Jesus, we learn, was the real deal. Jesus teaches with authority and Jesus heals with authority. Mark chapter 1, verse 22 reads, they were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as one of the scribes. Jesus teaches with authority and he heals with authority. But notice Jesus' authority has purpose and meaning. The unclean spirit recognizes Jesus and his authority. The spirit cries out, 
Have you come to destroy us? Have you come to destroy us? You see, that's how power and authority are often used in our society, to silence and destroy. If someone has a lot of power, they use it to silence and destroy. But Jesus is not like that. Jesus does not destroy. Jesus restores. Jesus restores the man's health and his well-being. The man is now free from the unclean spirit. The man goes from being unclean to clean. He goes from being an outsider to an insider, from being broken to being restored. Jesus is the one who heals with authority. In our life, how can we allow that authority of Jesus to be alive and active in our own life, to heal our own brokenness? What cuts us off from that deeper relationship with God that we see in the scriptures? How can we allow Jesus' authority to actually have authority in our life? Can we change directions and follow Jesus in a more intentional way? Well, one example of this was Bill Wilson, one of the founders of AA, also known as Alcoholics Anonymous. He writes in the blue book, the Alcoholics book, that his life, his marriage, his career, his relationships, his finances had all been destroyed by his addiction to alcohol. Every area of his life had been affected by his addiction to alcohol. But he still struggled. He did not want to give up control of his life. He did not want to yield to a higher power. But he writes, it wasn't until he yielded to that higher power that he admitted his weakness and his brokenness that God was able to work in his life and bring the change that was needed. You see, God doesn't force God's self upon us. We must admit our need. We must admit our own limitations. We must admit our false authority. Bill Wilson went on to yield to God's power. He did become sober at the age of 39, under God's authority, as he would say, and he lived to be 75. It's said that he's helped some 20 million people with his writings and with the, the group he helped found, Alcoholics Anonymous. But it was all about yielding first, giving up his authority that then allowed God's authority to work within him. Likewise, Dr. M. Scott Peck also came to realize his voice that sounded so authoritative could be used in better ways as he yielded his life in greater ways as he was an adult to God's authority and went on to be a famous psychiatrist and author. We see, that, we see this throughout Scripture, and that's one of the interesting things about Scripture is people think, well, if I look at those people in the Bible, they have it all together. No, they don't. They were broken people just like you and I. If you look at Abraham or Isaac, Moses, David, or Jonah, the list is long. They yielded their brokenness to God, and God worked with them in the midst of their weaknesses. God was strong when they were weak. We yield our authority to God's authority. Jesus comes teaching and healing, we see in the scriptures, and Jesus asks us to follow. Will we follow? Will we yield? Will we admit our weakness, our brokenness, and let God be the healer and the strength? Jesus comes to heal and restore. May Jesus renew us, restore us, and heal us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Joining our voices with the song of angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For all who share the gospel and proclaim freedom in Christ throughout the world, prophets, teachers, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders, for St. Luke and its ministries, for our Memphis Shelby County community, that we may serve one another. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all God's works and creation, plants and animals, water and soil, forests and farms, and for those tasked with protecting our natural resources and all that exists, we give thanks for the natural world around us and pray together we can see God's goodness in creation. Let us pray, have mercy, O God. We give thanks for the new COVID vaccines, and we pray for wisdom for all who must plan and organize so that the rate of vaccinations can increase. We give thanks for all healthcare workers. Help us all to do our part in protecting our neighbors in, from infections. Let us pray, have mercy, O God. For those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, those who are sick and hospitalized, those living with HIV AIDS, those struggling with mental illness, those who are hungry or homeless, and all in any need, especially those quarantined with COVID-19. For caregivers, hospice workers, and home health aides, let us pray, have mercy, O oh God. We pray for all who are isolated or alone. We pray for the St. Luke COVID Safety Task Force. We pray for all who have not had visitors in so long. We pray for hope and healing. Let us pray, have mercy, O oh God. Pour out your spirit upon Ashley, Jen and Paul, Morin, Yvonne, Jane, Robin, Helen, Marlene, Samantha, Sherry, Jerry, Chuck, Mark, Larry and Anita, Andrea, Kurt, Rachel, Jim, Elena, Michelle, Pauline, Matt, Laura, Matt Jr., Arlene, Megan, Charles, Clay who is suffering from COVID, Jill, Pam, Dan, and Paige. We offer comfort and guidance to Trish and Shirley, William and Sandra, Chris, Tammy P, Debbie, Donna, Sue, Philip, Josh, Clay's family, the family of Lindsay Proctor on her death, those alone during this time, those suffering with mental health issues, family and friends of those who have passed from COVID. We offer praises for our food pantry donors and volunteers, Church Health, the YMCA, COVID vaccines, and those administering. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Compassionate Lord and Savior, we offer now the additional prayers, prayers of our hearts and our minds. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. May we find the courage to live our lives as lives of conviction, of spirit, and of faith. Amen. Now is the time for the offering, and uh, we miss our time together when we pass the plates and we return that portion of those blessings that God has given us. So we thank you for your faithfulness for returning those portions in, in the, by electronically through our website or by mailing in your tithes and offerings. Thank you. And may God bless the giver, and may God multiply the gifts. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he has shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of the water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets, hopes, and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, gave thanks and broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the table, feast on God's abundant life for you. This is the body of Christ that has been broken and given for you. Take and eat. And Christ poured out his blood for the forgiveness of your sins. Drink.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, that you have fed us at your banqueting table with bread and wine beyond compare, the very life of Christ for us. Send your spirit with us now that we may set the captive free, use your gifts to build one another up, and in everything reflect your glory revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Receive God's blessing. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.